There's no such thing as what's the best subfloor system, it's what's best for you. We're talking thermal barriers, we're talking moisture management, we're talking construction technology. We're going to handle all the questions that our members have had on our forum for the last few months about their basement projects. We're going to do it all in this video. We're going to tackle six different ways to make a subfloor system at home and when to use what in what age of house and in what kind of conditions to get what kind of results. So without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into this. First of all, the one product everybody should know about, right? This is Drycore. There are other companies that make the same product. I think Barricade sells out of Lowe's. This sells out of Home Depot. Basically the premise is this. You've got a plastic dimpled system on the back and a tongue and groove OSB on top. And you can just buy these in two foot squares. Come tongue and groove and you can slap them all together. And this gives you moisture management. In the video today, I'm gonna to talk about when you should use this, if there's better alternatives, and how much it costs per square foot. Because that's a big issue nowadays, right? People want to know the cost. What am I getting involved with? This product here in Canadian dollars comes out to $2.10 a square foot. So if you have a thousand square foot basement, you're looking at $2,100 to put this product down. And it really is just drop it and set it and forget it. There are other things you can do with this. You can actually um, screw this right directly to the concrete if you have movement, okay, so you don't get noise when you walk, and that's great. But really what it is, is it's just a way to separate you from the concrete. Really handy in older homes if you don't have moisture barriers underneath your concrete. They didn't really start doing that until about 1990, 95, on a regular basis. So if you want to do a test, you just take a garbage bag and you tape it to your concrete. The next morning you come down, you lift the bag up. If there's a wet spot, you need moisture management. That's a type of moisture management. This panel is moisture management, again, because it has these troughs here. So if you get a little bit of moisture or you get a crack in the wall and a little water comes down in a heavy rainstorm, gets under your subfloor, it's okay. That's why we use these systems. That's water management. So we can manage vapor and we can manage a little bit of infiltration of water as well. What happens is, is it goes in between these cracks it ends up drying out. There's air, shared space, and there's concrete, and the moisture will find its way to disappear. The way these systems go together is really kind of simple. They're tongue and groove, and you have to take a block to nail them together. And if you're really efficient, <coughs> you can almost eliminate the gap. The reason I'm showing you this is this. Let's take a look at what is on, on the other side. That's pretty good, eh? That gives you actually a thermal break. Let's do a close-up of how well that's hammered together. That's really tightly hammered together. In my experience, that's not the way most people install this product. Most people install it with gaps. This gap, if you don't hammer it completely tight, means now you don't have a thermal break. Every joint is gonna be a place where it's cold coming up through the floor. In a basement, we have a four foot rule. And in Canada, it's for frost. Because in the winter time, the ground gets frozen bloody hard. Beneath that, it is 10 degrees. 45 for our friends in America, there where you've got basements, but you have a different system. And that's really cool, that's hypothermic. So when you're sitting down, and your couch, you're below that line, it's 10 degrees. And if you don't have a thermal break on your floor and you got heat coming from the ceiling, it's 10 degrees right around here. That sucks. So by putting in a subfloor system and having a thermal break, you can change the temperature at the floor by almost five to seven degrees just by having a thermal break. This one is not suitable for planks by itself. This one has no underpad, okay? So you're either gonna need an underlayment or buy planks that have an underpad to go directly on OSB. This panel goes for two and a half dollars a square foot. How convenient, it's more expensive to get a thermal break. So let's just go back. If you have an older house, you're gonna have moisture issues. You're gonna have vapor. So you need a subfloor system. And the best plan is to put it on and then put on all your other walls. Most people have a basement, they've already got walls. It's still better, it's an improvement, but it's not perfect. We have another video on why and how to assemble. What I'm talking about today is what kind of system should you use in your house? Here's another option for you. Now, see this? This dimpled membrane goes on the bottom. This gives you water management the same way that that dry core panel does. It's also made of a foam and it has a 0.5 R value or 0.3 or whatever it is, it's kind of ridiculous, but it does act as a thermal break. Not a great one, but it's a little. And you can install your flooring right on top of this product, which is really handy too. So if you've got a floating floor system like a vinyl or a plank made of laminate or you're doing an engineered hardwood that's just a click lock, you can install that right on top of this product as well. Now this isn't really a subfloor system, this is an underlayment, but it's kind of a hybrid because it has this moisture management. And that's why I always bring this up. For a lot of folks, if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, this is a great option. This is from DMX, it's called DMX One Step. I should also mention that this is also rated for sound. So if you're in a condominium or a concrete tower and you wanna put in a new floor, this has an IIC rating for transmission of sound. It condo complies, which is amazing. So now you've got an airspace and a sound barrier and something you can put your flooring directly on top of. A lot better than a piece of plastic. This product installs just by taping the joints together. Now you got a moisture lock and you can put your flooring 
directly on top of this. No pad required. Another product from the folks over at Drycore. This is called Insul Armor. This again has got pucks, which means it's a water management system because there's air underneath the floor. And because it's rigid foam, it is a thermal break. Now these panels, you should stagger the joints. Okay, so you get better lock. And they just go together like that. And you install your flooring right on top of that. No other underpads needed. It is a very dense rigid foam and you can put your flooring directly on top of this. Again, it has to be a floating floor. Vinyl, laminate, or click lock engineered hardwood. And here's the problem. Jeff, what if I want to put in engineered hardwood flooring and I've got to nail it down? The folks over here at Drycore have told us that in order to put a staple and hold the hardwood flooring down, you actually have to add another layer of 5 8 OSB because this isn't thick enough. The distance that you're creating from here to the floor is not enough room for that staple to be installed. And that's the engineering problem that we have. If you want to do real hardwood, or if you want to do engineered hardwood in a basement, this kind of panel isn't sufficient. You've got to add another layer. Right now, when I'm filming this video, OSB is 40 bucks a sheet. So it's a little over a dollar a square foot. Well, you're already at $2 a square foot. Now you're at $3 a square foot. That just doesn't make any sense. So there is another option. And there's something that contractors have been doing for years. Years ago, I did a video and it was a video and we'll put a link into it. You can check it out. What it is, it's exterior foundation membrane and it's from DMX and you can roll it out. It comes in a six and a half foot wide roll, it comes 60 feet long, and you can do an entire basement with just a couple seams and then tape the seams and get a waterproof vapor barrier that does water management. And then you can put your own OSB on top. That product comes in at around a buck and a half a square foot. And that is a really cost effective way to get a really good system. One of the benefits is, is it doesn't have any gap. So you aren't going to have any moisture transferring up into that OSB. Unfortunately, biggest downside of this system is the installer. If you don't get that gap, perfect and you can't just do it by working with your hands you got to hammer it in every one of those gaps where the foam isn't touching foam is now where moisture is going to transfer up into the osb the osb will swell and you're going to have problems with your floor install as well real big downside of this product if you want to take the time and use your integrity and a hammer get all your lines perfectly straight smash the 11 bejeebers out of it then you have a good system but if you're not that kind of person might i suggest try this instead this is Durafoam, and this is a three quarter inch. It comes in a one inch option. I don't think you need it because this gives you almost R3, which is a perfect thermal break for a floor. Any thicker than that, you're just wasting your money in my opinion. It is only $16 in pennies for the entire sheet, which means it's 50 cents a square foot. And all you gotta do is buy your OSB. Right now it's just about a buck, so it's a buck 50 solution. So this product compared to the Drycore Insul Armor or the insulated panel, it's a lot cheaper. The only thing it doesn't do is moisture management. So the backside doesn't have any air gaps. So you can save money, but you don't get as much performance. It's not a real big issue. This is also three quarters. So when I put my five eighths on top, now it's thick enough to I can nail down hardwood floor surfaces. So I got options. How do you pick? The way you pick is you gotta pick which solution you're trying to solve. First thing, what am I got as far as water management issues? Well, if you have an old house, you got vapor barrier issues. This is the vapor barrier, problem solved. If it's an old house and you've got foundation cracks, and you get water in the walls every once in a while, you probably want to have a dimpled floor. You could go with this and the DMX dimpled membrane, and then it comes out about the same price as a DMX panel. Then you can have water management and the thermal break, but now you're starting to get a pretty thick assembly. Now you're going to have a half inch plus a three quarter plus a five eighths. You're almost two inches in subfloor. You haven't even put the flooring in yet. Right? You're almost coming level with your first step in your basement. If you're dealing with water management from vapor, that's one thing. If you're dealing with water management coming from a wall, it's another thing. There is no subfloor out there to protect your basement from flooding. So just forget that out of your mind. We're dealing with managing potential risk, not flooding. So we can get a thermal break, which makes it comfortable to sit in your basement. We can have water management if we have an older house. But what if you have a new house? Like where I am, this is brand new. They've already got a vapor barrier underneath the concrete. They're going to have this whole sitting area. We've got insulation. We've got soundproofing going on. We're looking for the best quality subfloor that's on the market for this environment. And I'm just curious, which system do you think you would use in this house? This house is elevated. He's got creeks around here, but are down way below the ditches. This has all put on sand. He has no water table anywhere near the house. He's about 20 feet above the water table. All of his grading around the outside of the building has been done to perfection. And so all of the east troughs and drainage is put in place. He's not going to have any water coming through a foundation wall, which has actually got a house wrap on it. So he's got all the modern advancements. The only thing we're worried about is a flood, but we don't consider that with subflooring. Because he wants to go with engineered hardwood, we're going to go with the three quarter to get a thermal break. I'm not worried about moisture management. And we're going to go with a four by eight sheet of True Floor 5 8 tongue and groove. Tap con screw right into the concrete. That gives us the ability to install the flooring right on top. Now this system here, you need tuck tape to glue all of your insulated panels together. And you need tap con screws. 
I recommend two and three quarter long. The 316 width is just fine. And it has like a pan head screw. So it should sink right flush with your OSB when you drive it in. If you're having problems making that connection, just get a piece of copper wire and shove it in the hole. Remember, when you're doing this, don't clean out the dust. That's part of what you need to make the screw get good bond, okay? This panel here runs in and at about an inch and three eighths. So consider that as well. Height is an issue. With your total floor, you wanna make sure that your first step is kind of normal coming off the landing. Now, when it comes to you and answering your questions, there's a couple other things here. When you're dealing with four by eight sheets, it's nice to have a big window to bring it all through. We were able to have the truck drive right over with the skid, drop it off by the window, just slide it all in and carry it through the basement as needed. If you don't have a window to carry it all through, all of a sudden, those other panels start to look pretty darn attractive, don't they? Because to be honest with you, this is a pretty big sheet. Try carrying these bad boys down down your staircase without destroying your stairs or your walls while you're at it. It's dangerous. To be honest with you, I wouldn't want to do it. That is why these products are made, because a lot of houses don't have a big window to bring materials in. If you want an OSB and you want to have a thermal break and water management, this is great. One panel at a time. If you can carry four or five, that's great too. If you're looking for just a little bit of water management and not too worried about a thermal break, this is a great cheap option. This right here is the newest invention for a reason, because it gives you a thermal break, it gives you water management, and it's lightweight. This is why these products are made. Now this is why the, the celebrities are endorsing all these products, because it's a product that can be endorsed. It's got a trademark. They can put their picture on the box in the store. Systems like this, nobody endorses this. They don't show you this in, in HGTV because no one's getting paid to show the product. But the truth is, as a contractor, I'll take this over one of these products any day of the week. When I install this, I know I'm getting a perfect moisture lock and I know I'm getting value. I'm getting more performance. I got more insulation, more capability, and a better quality floor working with building materials than I do with products, which is why I don't have a sponsor for this video because I'm just telling you what I actually think. Now, if I need to, I'll go with a dimpled membrane, but if I want a thermal break, I'll go with a board like this. I actually spend a lot of time in the comment section. Feel free, jump in there right now and ask your questions about your house. Tell me where you live, how old the house is, whether it's moisture or thermal problems that you're dealing with, through the wall, through the floor, and I can help suggest a product for you. If you don't have the right window, it's okay. We can have discussions down below. So I'm not gonna tell you what to buy. I'm just gonna tell you that there's a lot of different options out there, and uh, it's a very specific situation based on your home and what you're trying to achieve for performance. Hopefully that helped clear it up, more muddy the water enough, but at least we have a conversation in the comment section. We'll see you there. Cheers till next time.